Welcome back to Reddit Stories. I'm Shane, and today's theme are stories that make you go, what? Which I feel like are all Reddit stories that we read here, but these ones especially. There's one story that I have read, and it is so funny. Joining us today are Arasha and Amanda. What? Who? <laughs> huh? Where? Why? Uh? There you go. You get it. Yeah. You yeah. understand. And that's all we have to contribute. Yep. Bye. Time. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's just hop into it. Okay. Deal. Uh, all right. What? This first story is from like two days ago. <gasps> Recent. What? Fresh. I know. Huh? Let's get a walk oh, count. Let's no. get a walk count. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for telling my friend she is ruining her child's life with the name she gave her? Ooh. We've had stories similar to this, but- Need more, yeah, we need more. Okay, so 21 year old woman. So I have been friends with Laureen, who's 22, for 17 years now, and we're really close. She recently gave birth to her daughter, and she and her husband recently told us the name. They decided to name their daughter, so they named their daughter Juliet. Spelled G-H-I-U-L-I-Y-E. T T E. Oh, <laughs> it just kept going. And her middle name is Mariah, M A H R I Y A. Oh. I thought the spelling was a joke until she told me they are serious. I told her that with that spelling of a simple but beautiful name, it's just going to ruin that little girl's life. She got mad and told me to stop ruining her mood and that I'm being mean. I'm completely honest, the spelling is just bad. Nothing else can explain it. Why ruin such a beautiful name by including letters that don't belong there? I texted her yesterday and told her that the little girl will try to change her name or at least go by her middle name since it's normal. She told me to stop texting her, that I'm a bad friend, and that I'm being the asshole for making fun of the name. I don't think I am. When I told her that the spelling is just bad, she went crazy. She told me that I'm the worst friend ever and that I would never be able to see her daughter again. After that, her husband sent me an email telling me to stop being so disrespectful. He thinks the spelling is cute and it just makes her unique. Unique, yes, but that's just going to make that little girl suffer and she will probably be, bu probably be bullied for that spelling. <laughs> I haven't replied, and honestly, I don't think I'm the asshole here, but I thought I'd ask Reddit since y'all are the best to judge. So am, I <laughs> so am I the asshole for telling my friend that the name she gave her daughter is bad and will ruin her life? Can, can we get that spelling just yeah. one more time? Juliet spelled G-H-I-U-L-I-Y-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. So like so Studio like Juliet. <laughs> Studio Ghibliet. Um, I think if I, I think if I looked at this, I would, I would either say, Ju I would maybe go with Juliet or like Juliet or yeah, something. Yeah, Julia yeah. Gulia. Juliet. Gillette. Can I see Gillette. what it looks like? Gillette. I'm a visual girly too. I gotta see it. Guilette. Oh, I think I would say Ghirardelli. Yeah. Guilette. Ghirardelli. All right. What are your thoughts? You go. Um, yeah, she's the asshole. Back up. Oh. You have nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. It's their kid. They can name it Frankenstein for all they care. <laughs> it's, it, it has nothing to do with this woman. She needs to back up. Here's one thing I found out. I have sisters. Do not tell them how to raise their children. Do not give their opinion on their names. Okay. I love that. Honestly, that's, that's my tea. Tea? Take. And truth, and tea. All um, right. You know, I, I feel like I was, I, I'm bringing in so much of my personal experience here because I grew up with a name that was so often pronounced like it was spelled F-G-H-I, like all these like random letters, like people would just misspell it or mispronounce it and, and it was, uh, sure, like frustrating, but by no means was my life like Ruined. suffering because of my name spelling. Yeah. Um, I mean, mine also I think is a different case because my name is spelt just like it sound, um, just like it sounds. So I, 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 I agree with you in that it's quite dramatic to say like, no, 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 like you cannot do that. Like it's funny to joke once and be like, yikes, you sure? 
but yeah. to just consistently be like. And then get an email of it's like, leave us alone. Yeah. And it's like, no. oh, you really? Yeah. What do you get, gain from this? She's got right. like, she's acting as if it's like personal stake. Like if she was naming the child and it was a disagreement among the couple, that's a different story. But she is simply on the outside of it. I think she, her opinion was not asked and it is just being given and reinforced. So uh, a little bit of, yeah, what Amanda said, I, I think back up. Yeah. Uh, this is a very light relation, but you know, my name is not spelled like normal Shane. Right, I have right. the Y in it. Um, why? It's never really bothered me. D yeah, why? Um, I'll never have a coffee mug, like I'll never have a souvenir with my name on it. You know, it's always Shane without the Y. You're one of it us. It has not ruined my life by <laughs> any means. Um, I, and I also, and maybe this is like just being out here knowing a bunch of actors. Like I feel like I know so many people with very unique names. I just, I am not someone who thinks twice about it. Like I yeah. don't really care about people's names to that degree. I mean, my husband's name is Garadze and it's spelled H-A-R-D-Z-E-I. Mm -hmm. And of course people are like, whoa, oh what? Oh what? Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> but then it then they move on. Yeah. And then right. we all get on with our day. Yes, yes. It's and he's not never gonna to... have Garde spelt on a cup ever. Right. But it's it's just <laughs> it's like it's like a quote unquote the price you pay for having a very unique name. Cool. I I actually yeah, I think it's kind of like, okay, again. It's a the, lot. The though. spelling is a lot. Like we're it's, not. It's a lot. We're we by no agree, means. It's a lot. Yes. The Mariah right. though. It's like all right. It's spelled <laughs> Mariah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know, she also like later on says like, it's fine. you know, your daughter's gonna end up going by her middle name or something since that's normal. And it's like, okay, maybe she will. Like. Uh, yeah. And okay. and what about that? It's also just like you know that's. I think I think it's what my problem with it is that it's assigning emotions to like somebody who isn't even able to advocate for themselves yet. Fair. Like let them ultimately decide uh, how they're gonna feel about their name. But if this yeah. friend is in the life being like, yeah, your name sucks. I tried to tell your mom. Like that's just let gonna... me save you. Yeah, let yeah. me take you like, from don't, this horrible don't be the home. Hero right now, yeah. try to be. Yeah, because even no matter how bad the name is, and you go, that's a bad name. It's like, well, like, what are you gonna do? Like, you can't. This was gonna be the outcome if you try to shame someone for what they're naming their kid, no matter what you think of it. And like, yeah. there are a lot of parents who name their kids crazy shit. Yeah. Did she apologize? Uh, no, not as of this. I don't think she did. Um, that's also what's kind of missing. We Ooh. we know she that she said. Uh, I told her that the that with that spelling, uh, it's just going to ruin that little girl's life. That's all that was like. Uh, oh, and then I texted her yesterday and told her that the little girl will try to change her name. So she kept doubling down. Like yeah. she kept doubling down. It's like okay, let up. I know me in this situation. I would not. Press it like I'd, I'd, be like, I'd be like that is right. what you're naming your child. But also, people can change their names, and you know, I, I don't think Juliet spelled weird is like a name that I would be too concerned with. Right. Like you know, some people do have names where I'm like, okay, maybe people will bully you in school. But I also think like school is brutal, and it's like they're gonna find something to bully you for. Like right. regardless, they're gonna find something. Yeah, I I think um I think there's there's a lot going on inside of this one. Um, that there's there's definitely a lot of context missing too. Yeah. But it's funny that she is the one telling this story, and she deliberately has like left out a lot of the the details in terms of like like there might have been an apology or there might have been more correspondence. But it's like even in the way that she is telling this story, we still kind of find it quite clear that she yeah. is wrong. Yeah. And Any comments? Well, what I was gonna say is the verdict is not the asshole. Um, and the top comment. What? <laughs> Who? Why? I actually, that, that what was genuine. What? Uh, the top comment here is, hi, I'm a high school teacher. I'll tell you upfront that you're right. Kids with f***ed up spellings of their names are miserable about three-fourths of the time. It's difficult to spell, people mispronounce them, and official documents? Forget about it. <laughs> it's one of the ways we clock parents as potentially difficult. I keep in touch with three students who changed their names from their parents' spelling to the actual conventional spelling the minute they turned 18. That kid will be Juliet, spelled normally, Mariah, M-A-R-I-A, as soon as she possibly can. 
not the asshole. That's 25,000 upvotes. I, I actually, Whoa! you know what, what I, what I actually, ugh, I actually feel so bothered by that. Really? I don't. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree all. with it either. I actually, there I'm like in- people from other countries who have wild spelling that's not, that's totally I, different. I, I think it's the language that's really kind of upsetting me here and that f***ed up versus normal. Like we need to question these, these, these like rituals. Why are names spelled like a certain way? And just because it has been that way for so long, that doesn't mean it's normal. That just means it's, it's it's recent or, or or it's it's the pattern that has been created but just because there's a new spelling that's introduced does not make it abnormal mm -hmm. i'm i'm starting You're here oh i'm heated yeah, yeah, to the town hall what <laughs> but i'm also just like this teacher's like yeah it's fucked up fucking fucked. it's like um, what? Are you, um, you're, a, you're, a te you're a teacher? And you know what, though? I, I, I also want to acknowledge that I hear where he is maybe coming from, in that he has had direct experiences with a lot of students, and they have had a terrible experience with their names. Like, mm -hmm. that sucks, and I think it's cool that he is saying, like, hey, hold on, like, this is me trying to, like, fight for, you know, this, this kid to not have a miserable childhood. But I think at the end of the day, it goes back to the opinion was not asked for. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I grew up constantly spelling my name to people and I don't personally think that it made me suffer. I don't think that it ruined my childhood or ruined my life. Yes, it yeah. certainly made me feel uh, different from mm -hmm. the rest of my uh, the class. It certainly made me an outlier, but like, yeah, it's kind of cool now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. I think it's one that in the comments, if people people commenting if they have names that that they can relate to this story, yeah, what they what their personal experiences were and what they think of this too, mm. you know, like I think because um, I with my name I can't really relate to that, um, but uh, you know it's interesting. I think I think what's tough here is that these comments are talking about the parents and if they're assholes for naming their kid that, and what we're talking about is the etiquette of like, was it was it your place to give that opinion? Was it your place? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, there's absolutely. two separate things going on. So, sure. most, so most people think that this woman who wrote that is not the asshole. They're mm -hmm. saying that she's not the asshole for for telling them that they're ruining their kid's life. I actually just I haven't been so angered by a Reddit story before. I feel like I've been able to navigate both sides for so long, but yeah. this one I just I actually am feeling so bothered by. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah. it's I, I kind of I, I know it's again it's not the same as you as well uh, as you too, Shane. Mm -hmm. But it's also not the same as this person because again, mine isn't as complicated. It could be sure. much more intricate, and it could be pronounced completely different than how it's spelled. So I, in all fairness, can't also advocate for that side as strongly yeah. too. Well, it's also it's you know it's one of those things like these are our feelings about it. But yep. it, clearly, people have different feelings regarding this, and mm. so you know it's interesting. I'm curious. Was it uh, just the teacher that commented? There were other comments, but that was like the most uh, poignant. That was like the most upvoted. I one. see. So that I think it reflects a lot of the comments yeah, sure. in the Reddit yep. post. Um, so yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's move on. Let's move on. Here's our next story. This is from 2016. This is a little old school. I was in high school. Well. That makes me sick. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's a 29 year old woman. My boyfriend, who's 32, gave away my Hamilton tickets. Am I being selfish for just wanting to break up over this? Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who? Based on that title. <laughs> based on that title alone, what do you think? So he gave away the Hamilton tickets? He gave away Hamilton tickets. Okay, it better have been for a lot of money. Throw away because while I'm fairly sure he uh, or his family doesn't read it, I would rather be safe than sorry. Backstory, my mom is genuinely one of the funniest, kindest, sweetest people I've ever met, and I'm genuinely lucky to have been her daughter. She had me fairly young, raised me by herself, and while we were pretty poor growing up, she did her damnedest to make sure that I got a good education and had everything I needed as a kid. One of the things we share is a love of the theater. She would save up and take me to all the musicals that stopped on tour in our town, and while we were always in the cheap seats, it was always something we both greatly looked forward to. 
These memories of going to the theater with my mom are very precious to me and are one of the main factors in why I work in the entertainment industry today. Corporate side, I have a horrendous singing voice, LOL. <laughs> Fast forward to today. Like most theater nerds, my mom and I are basically obsessed with Hamilton. And for those of you who aren't really familiar with it, this show is basically impossible to get tickets for at this point, unless you want to see it in January of next year. I'm lucky enough to be in a financial position with my job that I could afford tickets for a show in July for me and my mom. These are amazing seats, fifth row center. And through some type of divine intervention, I managed to snag tickets for the night of Lin-Manuel Miranda's final performance. I surprised my mom with these tickets back in December. I bought them in October, I think, for Christmas. I'm making a whole week of it. I put us in a, up in a really nice hotel. I made reservations at a bunch of restaurants that we both want to try. And we're going to do a bunch of touristy shit in general. Plus, try to see if we can fit in at least one other show before we leave. We are both incredibly excited for this. My mom even has a little Hamilton countdown that she's doing on a mini chalkboard she uses as a planner. She sends me pics every day when she changes it. It's cute. In January, I began dating this guy that I'll refer to as Josh. We were casual slash not exclusive for a while, but became serious within the last two months. He also works in the corporate side of entertainment, but at a different agency than I do. He also has a higher position than me and makes a lot more money than I do. This becomes important. We met at an industry event and we hit it off instantly. I thought I could get really serious about this guy and up to this point there have been no red flags that I've seen. Although right now I'm sifting through all of my memories to see if there's something I missed. He also comes from a much wealthier family than I do. Josh has a younger sister that I'll call Jennifer, who's 17, that's kind of going through a big troubled teen phase. She cuts class, smokes, and is really disrespectful to her parents. I've only met her once, but as far as I know, she's not doing anything too bad. She's just kind of a sad kid and could really benefit from some therapy. I floated this by Josh, but he said his parents are kind of disdainful of therapy in general. Josh says they can't reach out to her no matter what they do, and they've tried everything, except trying to get her to a counselor, but whatever. Actual problem time. Sunday night, I was at my place with Josh. We were drinking wine and cuddling while watching the Tonys, theater awards show in parenthesis. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I didn't know. Gotcha. Didn't um, know my mom was texting me during the Hamilton performance and geeking out about how excited she was. I laughed and showed my mom's text to Josh because I thought it was so adorable. And he didn't say anything off, but he was acting kind of strange after. He asked me what date the show we were going to was. I told him, and then he went into the other room to take a phone call. I thought nothing of it because we both have to take random phone calls like that for our jobs all the time, and he's going through some kind of tough time at his. He was in an unusually good mood afterwards and said he had to go home early because he had to sign some forms at the office early tomorrow before we met up to go get brunch with his parents later that day. Again, nothing too unusual and pretty common with the both of us. He picks me up at work for brunch with his parents, and again, he's in an unusually good, good mood. I ask what's up, and he says vaguely that things are going well at the office, and this deal he's trying to make is finally going through. Mm -hmm. I don't really press for info because we both try to avoid work topics, partially due to work shit uh, being fairly uh, banal, and partially because we both have to sign some pretty gnarly NDAs a lot of the time. And this is only my second time meeting his parents, so I'm still a bit nervous about brunch. We get to the brunch place, and the first thing his mom does when she sees me is gives me a huge warm hug and profoundly thanks me for my kindness. Her dad also gives me a huge handshake and thanks me for helping out with Jen. I'm kind of what the f***ing because I have no clue what they're talking about. I ask what she means and she says, for giving her the Hamilton tickets. I turn around to Josh and he just has this big grin on his face. But Reddit, that time my boyfriend was away talking on the phone for business, he was actually on the phone with Jen promising that I would give her my Hamilton tickets. I was so thrown off by this that I, kind of not very tactfully, I admit, say how I had no clue about this, Josh looks pissed, and his parents are equally thrown off. But instead of getting mad at Josh, his mom just says, well, you can still give them to her though, right? And they all look at me like I'm supposed to just agree with this. I try to explain that the trip is actually for me and my mom and how important this is to my mom. All three of them start going on about how Jen is super excited about this and that this is the first time that she's not been mad slash expressed happiness to them in a while. And that's how the next half hour goes basically until the parents leave mad and the, dad's call, and the dad calls me a selfish cow. Oh! Uh, I'm so flabbergasted that I just sort of put up with it, but I could barely get in a word. Josh and I go outside the brunch place and he starts screaming at me about my selfishness and how Jen is going through a much harder time than they thought. He wasn't clear on this, so I'm not quite sure what he meant. And that I'm being childish because it's just a musical. I hate having arguments in public, 
Also, this is one of my favorite brunch spots and I wanted to be able to come back without being embarrassed, so I wasn't really engaging. He eventually called me a what the f and then left in his car, which is awkward as hell because it was a valet parking, so he was just kind of stewing by the valet stand while I was waiting for my Uber. Later that night, I texted him saying, while I wasn't giving up my tickets, there are still some available on that date. However, they cost about $2,500 due to ticket scalpers jacking up the price. Believe me, this is not a problem for either of the parents or my boyfriend. He literally bought a $3,000 watch for funsies last week. The only response I got was that that was an exorbitant fee. I agree, but not the point. He refuses to pay, and he didn't understand why I couldn't just give the tickets to Jen. I also got texts from both his parents pleading with me to get the tickets, and also they forwarded an email to me that Jen sent to Josh and her parents, thanking them for the surprise. Apparently, she's also obsessed with Hamilton, and this is making her year. Also, we live in LA. Do they also expect me to give up my plane ticket slash hotel? What the fuck was their game plan here? Look, I completely understand wanting to help out with Jen, and I feel really bad that apparently her family is filled with weirdos, but this has been all so baffling, and the entitled behavior they displayed is a massive turnoff. I'm not giving up these tickets. Is this selfish? But I also kind of want to cut my losses here. The attitude Josh displayed towards me outside of the brunch place was very unpleasant, to say the least, and he knows how disrespectful I find being called a c so... I'm half of a mind to just break up with him. He knew I had these tickets for a while, and I don't get why he decided to, to do this now at all. But should I contact Jen and explain at all? I just saw that she made a really excited post on Facebook about it. I'm not friends with her, but I am friends with my boyfriend, and he liked her post. I would straight up buy the ticket for her, but frankly, I can't afford those prices because I'm saving up for the New York City trip uh, for my mom. How do I move forward? Oh my God. She should kill him. Break up I, with I, that mother I, I was reading it, I was like, you know what, maybe he should die. Maybe, he should. maybe, maybe dump him and then, and then dump his body. Like, actually murder this man. Uh, that is wild. I, that, I, my, like, yes. everything inside me was shutting down. No, I'm gagged. My system was like, Vroom. I, I, her comment where she's like, I'm looking back and seeing all the red flags, and I'm like, there's no fucking way this d guy didn't have a million red flags. Probably before. had a m I cannot believe the parents called her a, a, a selfish cow. Cow? Yeah. What? what? No, this Bye. family's this a is, nightmare. I, okay, first of all, I'm really glad that I was worried that he sold the tickets and they were gone. Yes. And I yeah. was getting really overwhelmed. Me too. I thought it was going to be something with like the agency where he was like, I need to close a deal. So he gave the tickets. And, and I was mom like, uh-oh. And mom was sending photos. She had a checklist. She was ready to go to Hamilton. It's their thing. It's their Since thing. they were young. Why would he take that? Because he's evil and needs to die. <laughs> Let's yeah. bury him under the brunch place. Done. 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 We're going. All it's right. Been, it's been eight years, guys. You coming? He could be dead. I, uh, <laughs> let's look at the Here, obituary. Here's yeah. the thing. Jen, I, I get it. 17-year-olds are going through a tough time, but tickets but, well, aren't going to solve her issue. And let's be clear. No. Jen, Jen's... Her day is her year is not going to be ruined because of oh, her. Her her year is going to be ruined because of her family yeah. lying to her lying. and making up all this bullshit, and that they're not willing to just buy the tickets for her. She now. probably would be so upset knowing that that would be taken away from them. Yeah, trick. no, that, I, that's actually like just full of absurd, ridiculousness, horrendous. It it actually just continued to unravel and and fully just stopped making sense I, at a certain point. Yeah. It was I, that bad. I feel bad for her because, you know, there's a lot of people like this and like of, of people who they are so harsh on themselves that they, they're they not realizing how much of a monster someone is. Because yep. at the end here, after, after she wrote out this story, she's like, I am not giving up these tickets. In parenthesis, is this selfish? It's like, how are you questioning that? What are you saying? How are you possibly this questioning is that? This is your thing it's, it, that you worked hard for. I completely like hear that though. Like it's 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 like you don't have that no this person has clearly never been validated. They've they've only been made to feel like that they are wrong to doubt themselves, to be insecure about their thoughts. So they do have to genuinely reach out to a community and say Am I crazy? Uh, uh, I yeah. can only assume that this guy in their few months of dating has been so controlling and she thinks it's normal. Yep. And this was finally where he, and he clearly thought he could just do this. Of like course. here she was talking about like, I'm going, I got tickets with my mom and he's sitting there going, oh, I can just take those. Yeah. Those are mine You're now. You're so right. Like he 
is so messed up that he's, he's thinking just, yeah, I'll be able to do it. And he assumed he would say that and she'd go, oh yeah, that's what he thought was gonna he happen. So much control. And he was so mad when it didn't work. Yeah, he called her a outside her favorite brunch place. That is a crime. That is a crime. Yeah. And I love that she was I, like, I wasn't gonna fight back because I wanna come back to this brunch place. Yes, I loved that. But I you know, know what? I, I know. I, I fully wanna say, like, it's, yes, it's like, it's heartbreaking that she doesn't understand uh, that it is so selfish of him to do. But I do wanna take a second and actually acknowledge how empathetic this woman is. Yeah. In, and that gets in, taken advantage of. Yes. In her whole response, she she does not like blow her top at all. She's continuing to be like, they called me this. And you know what? I understand because they're clearly going through a lot in their it's inside like, of their family. You don't owe them that. In and this it's moment. like, oh, oh, honey, like right. you 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 have clearly you have so many great tools. And it sounds like she's had a great mother who has raised her so right. Hamilton. Hamilton, Hamilton. so cute, so great. Let's also like be clear. Great relationship. Let's also be clear. They're going through a lot. They have the money to buy these tickets. Right. They could have just gone, you know what? She's taking her mom. That's a great idea. We should buy tickets for Jen. Right. Like, no, no they clearly, they don't want to do shit for Jen. Also, take no. Jen to therapy, man. Yeah, yeah. actually, like, no, hashtag Jen's probably take miserable. Jen to therapy. Jen's miserable because that's her family. Exactly. Yeah, justice for Jen. Yeah. yeah. Justice, justice for Jen <laughs> no, and the brunch place. I guarantee place. you, Jen's probably like, I f***ing hate them. I f***ing hate them. <laughs> Is there any update? Um, no, but there's some comments here. Lynn okay. didn't go on that night. <laughs> <laughs> Top comment. I would dump him. It's not just about the tickets, but the lack of respect. He chose not to tell you and waited for it to come out in public in hopes that you'd step down to avoid making a scene. You sound like you have a good relationship with your mom. Take her to the show. Good moms are forever. Boys are temporary. That's so true. He waited. He waited till there was a bunch of people at her brunch spot and, and, and let someone else say it so that so he, he, he set guy. up the whole chess trap. Insane. Uh, OP responded to that saying, yeah, I'm typing up an email dumping him right now. Email. Normally, I think it's better to meet up in real life for things like this, but his behavior both during and outside brunch was scary, and I would prefer not to be alone with him right now. Maybe that's paranoid, but better safe than sorry. Oh, I think this is paranoid. one of the... I think this is one of those situations where everything was so crazy and they were acting like this is totally normal behavior that I thought I was the insane one. Um, another comment. There was a really similar post to, to this during Christmas where the OP made this beautiful cat vase for her mom by hand. It took months. And the boyfriend gifted it to his mom in front of her and expected the OP to just go along with it. The OP said there was a mix-up and the boyfriend's mom was so crushed. He reacted the same way uh, this OP's boyfriend did, yelling and calling her selfish. So apparently stuff like this happens more often than you think. Lastly, we have someone said, erase yourself from the narrative. <laughs> Uh, Queen. Yes. Queen. O OP said all the Hamilton puns in here are killing me in the best way. I can only assume there was a bunch more. Um, yep. uh, yeah. No, I mean, look, uh, I don't, I think, I think at any stage in a relationship, if your partner calls you a that's, if, if you said, you know, I'm going to break up with them, I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. Like, had they been married for 20 years and this happened, that's grounds to get, get rid Agreed. of it entirely. Absolutely. This is like two months in. This guy is a nightmare. That one really made me go, I have a feeling, I have what? A feeling, I have a feeling that shit's common. Oh. Also, in the comments, let me know if, if that has happened to you or if someone has Is that shit. common? I think, I think, like, just that type of controlling behavior of, yeah, like, yeah. just being like, that's mine. <gasps> like, everything's mine. And just, and just, like, treating other people around like they are just your pawns. Yeah. They are, it's just, it's just his family and, and people around him that he cares about. And, oh, this girl, oh, yeah, well, well her life doesn't matter because she only exists as a, as an extension of me for the last You see where he months. got it from. I mean, his parents. Yeah. And Jen's, like, probably Jen. living her life. She's probably a spiritual guru. Oh, God, point. yeah. Hopefully. Justice for Jen. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. This episode of Reddit Stories is brought to you by Factor Foods. If you're looking to eat stress-free this spring, then check out Factor. They've got a ton of options. They're all uh, chef-crafted, dietitian approved and delivered straight to your door and ready in just two minutes. And they have so many options, uh, over 35 options uh, every week to choose from. Uh, these include Protein Plus, Calorie Smart, 
vegan, all sorts of things. Anything you'd want, they've got it. They've got breakfast, lunch, dinner options, and they are delicious. I'm a big fan of Factor myself, and it does make things a lot easier. And this month, uh, for Earth Day, they have a, uh, you can celebrate Earth Day all month long by checking out their Earth Month Eats badge, uh, which will show their lowest carbon footprint meals uh, to check out. So you can also feel good about it uh, while you are uh, eating convenient, delicious meals. So if you're interested, head to factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 and use code pitreddit50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code pitreddit50 at factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Back to the show. Next story. Okay. Okay, so that story got you really pissed off. Yeah. This next story I have read, and it is the funniest Reddit story I've read in a long time. It made me laugh so hard. Okay. All right. All right. right. This comes from the Grateful Dead subreddit. For Grateful Dead fans. It's the guy. Uh, So my character on Goldberg's was a Grateful Dead fan. You know what the Grateful Dead is? Grateful Dead's a band. uh, They're they're a band from like the 70s. um, And and they have, but they have a cult following. But they're a band. They're a great band. Uh, Jerry Garcia was the lead singer. And you know Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia? Yeah, Cherry Garcia is. That's Jerry Garcia. Garcia. (laughs) That's Grateful Dead. Oh my God, I was always like, who's Garcia? It's a a super influential band, (laughs) but the the fan base for it is like hardcore. They follow, they are like, it's a whole lifestyle. It's it's a whole bunch of things. I actually went to a Grateful Dead concert a couple years ago. um, And um, (laughs) I luckily didn't get recognized by too many but, but yeah. I got recognized by one guy, but I'd played a deadhead on on TV for years, but I didn't actually know a ton about the Grateful Dead. Oh. So if someone came up and really grilled me, I'd have been like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh-huh. you know I'm an actor. Jerry act- Garcia. You know I'm an actor, right? Um, but I have listened to Grateful Dead. Like I made sure I wasn't like, I was, Trying to do my part. As you did actor. your research, but um, it's it's like a bunch of old hippies smoking a ton of weed, super Tied chill vibes. Shirts. These yeah. songs, they have songs that just go for like ever, and they're just riffing. And oh, it's I just love whatever. that. It's very much a vibey type of mm. thing. Advice: I'm meeting up with a deadhead woman uh, I met online, and I told her I was Jeff Cimenti's piano teacher. I don't know anything about the piano, unfortunately. Turns out her dad is in a dead cover band and he booked a show at his church in her hometown. He wants me to play the show. <laughs> so I believe Jeff Cimenti plays with like plays like their concerts nowadays and stuff. Um, I'm not I'm not entirely sure. And but, what was the lie there that he was? So he said he was his piano teacher. So this, pro, the- this, prof, this professional keyboardist, he said that he was their piano teacher. Now he's talking to a woman online. So they've never met in person, but they've clearly been talking a long oh, time. Oh, so it's okay. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, I'm their piano teacher. Hell yeah, uh, just lying. And so now, he's in, uh, he's in a very curb your enthusiasm place. Yeah, wow. absolutely. This All is right. definitely a mistake. The show is next weekend. This woman just told me he paid four thousand dollars to rent the church, and they're going to name the vacation Bible school after him this summer because of the money. His wife is f-ing pissed because the 4K was supposed to be for their 40th anniversary trip to Alaska. He's actually been staying at the woman I'm talking to online's house because the wife can't believe he did it. This woman I'm talking to is a graphic designer, and he paid her to design a poster that features my name prominently. It looks like an old-time movie poster. She shared it on Facebook and tagged me, and a bunch of people that know me were co- commenting, what the f***? This dad just bought a B3 organ off a buddy for me to play. He's invited all his friends. He's invited his ex-wife. She also told me that his buddy is the drive time DJ on the small local radio station and keeps doing show announcements for this concert. Again, prominently featuring my name. He owns a diner in town and has renamed all the lunch specials in the show's honor. And one of the uh, one of the sandwiches, once again, prominently features my name. This is this is like the crowning event of this man's life. How do I get out of this nightmare? So this man has a week to learn piano. <laughs> no, oh, just to learn the basics. No, he can't show up. 
No, and he these, has to come clean. And, and and mind you, like I said, Grateful Dead stuff is like it's it's long. Ride or die. It's like riffing. It's like you gotta be good. It's <laughs> like, like you, jazz, right? Yeah, it's it's. In, I would say I, I'm not a music person, as people know. I would say yeah. It's, it's like kind jazz. of like a you gotta be good at music you look and know at the how person, to go. You're along. like you got it, and it's like an hour later, like ba 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 da da ba. You know? Yeah. I would. You know? I, I know. Jazz. I know jazz. There might be jazz. comments that are like, you're comparing Grateful Dead to jazz, and that's funny. But <laughs> no, I think I'm, just in the terms of like, you gotta improvise. I'm sure, comparing sure, sure, sure. it to how long it can go. Also, fish concerts. Yeah. How yes. long they go on forever. I would say it's comparable to fish, but I'm not a music person, so don't get mad at me. No, I love but, yeah, all right. But uh, I would say he can't get away with the basics on this one. This is so funny. This feels like, like a National Lampoon movie. Like it feels like a movie where I'm cringing. It yeah. just feels like Seinfeld. Like this is this is a George movie. I was gonna say it's, <laughs> it's quite literally building as an improv scene would, where yeah. it's just like the flyers got the name on it. Oh, and all and every diner in town is serving this big. It sandwich. just it just like, feels like I picture Jerry and George at the diner, and, he, and Jerry's just like. So you told her that you can play the piano? He's like, I told her I could play the piano. Like, it's just like, <laughs> now I gotta learn. Now I don't know yeah. what to do. Like, that's like I'd like, watch that show. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't born after that show was done. Oh my God. <laughs> Everything hurts. hurts. Right here on this couch. Everything <laughs> hurts inside. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, top comment. I'm racking my brain trying to figure out which song slash Seinfeld episode this is from. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. yeah. This Holy is shit. Also, this family just immediately believed him. Well, they didn't know I mean, that, right? why. They didn't fact check. Well, Google how do you his fact name. Check? She she's been talking to. He must have gone in depth because they've been talking online for I, I assume a while, and he's telling her. Why I, did he lie? I'm this guy's piano teacher. I'm a piano player. Like he probably went all in because he was thinking like this will really impress her. When we meet up, I'll get laid. That's probably what he's thinking. And now this is the outcome. Also, it's it's this is what no messes me up with cringy things. I'm now thinking about the wife who can't go to Alaska. That's what oh, I'm really yeah. thinking. Oh, yeah, there's about. an asshole inside. There's of that a bunch. Too. There's, there's a bunch of shit you. going on. Yeah, here. I'm yeah. thinking about this. I just woman. love that this guy brought that up because he's like, there's so many stakes now. Like he's just like, oh god, like there's probably a stake. What I think, him. what I do think is diner. crazy. What I do think is crazy, is that this guy just booked this venue and put him in it without being like, do you want to play in it? Right. Uh, like where's you the booking ask letter? Someone if they want to perform in a show before telling them. And they're the performing daughter's in a like, show. isn't it great, Dad? He needs to. He needs to like put down Reddit. He needs to put his hand on a table and get a hammer. He needs to. He needs to do ah! something. He needs to go on TaskRabbit and say, "Someone needs to help me get in a horrible accident." I need someone to attempt to assassinate. That is me not what I would fail. think he needs to do. He needs to come clean, people. Oh, he right, can't come right, clean. Right, right, it's right. too late. What are you? He guys can't do it. Right. He can't do it. No, he's too far gone. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Right. he could get up there and just start performing some stand-up. He no, the funny no. no no the funniest thing the funniest thing he could do at this stage is to just keep going. Like, just just go there, get up there, and be like. What? Hey, I made it, I made it this far. In what world would you think that and that's just okay? Riff. Look, and maybe the clout will carry him. He goes, he goes, one, two, three. <laughs> He plays chopsticks. Listen, clearly, <laughs> clearly they care. They care way more about just this clout that he was the piano teacher. So I bet he goes up there and he performs like shit, and they love it. They're like, oh my god, this yeah. is inspired. No, yeah. No, guys. Yeah. He just no. needs to be I'm like, you guys it. aren't on my level. Oh my god. Okay. Other comments. Only one thing to do: show up and fake it. Just hammer on the white keys. Get real weird and naked during the performance, and then when the show is over, jump up on the piano bench and bellow out. Lordy Jesus, we went the way the f out on that jam. Then as you swagger out of the church, high five anyone that looks engaged. If you get a second date, then you know she's a keeper. Someone said, OP, does your car have an airbag and are you attached to it? Because you're gonna need to hold the inside of the steering wheel and let that airbag break all 10 of your fingers. <laughs> when, wow. you, when you do this, you need to listen to going down the road feeling bad. Someone else said, you're going to need to get some plaster casting material and just tell them you broke both arms. <laughs> also, how old are you? I would hope one of them noticed Jeff Cimenti learned piano in 1975. Or maybe you're 80 years old. I want this to be real. 
my thought is that this is an older dude. I've been picturing him as at least like oh, yeah, no, yeah. 60 or 70. I am I am updated. loving everybody jumping on the bandwagon of we are gonna tell you exactly how to execute this lie. Yeah. It feels like a Bill Murray movie. Like honestly, oh, yeah. just like him and the cast, just like, oh man, I wish. No, I, I wish. love I look, Who? I hate <laughs> fuck. No. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, hey, what movie was he in? R.I.P. What movie was he in? Um, R.I.P. He's alive. <laughs> Goodwill Hunting. Get. I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. I wanted to see all of you jump out of your seats, which I got. What other movies? <laughs> all of you just went like what that. What other? What other movies? Ian. So what's the update? She doesn't know him. She doesn't know who he is. She doesn't know who Bill Murray is. Listen, I, you want me to? Guess? <laughs> <laughs> You're losing your mind. I'm, really, I'm gonna rip these tights off my legs. What would you do in this situation? I what, would what's confess. It, what situation? Well, yeah, okay, to be honest, I would never I, get in this situation. A, I would never get in this situation, but, but me, Amanda, I can't stand the cringe. I would go, I have an awful confession to make, and then block her from everything. <laughs> I hate lying, and I, like, I, I tr cannot do it, but... I think it's so funny when people lie about shit where you're just definitely not going to get away with it. Like, you're not gonna get away. My theory, I have a theory on this story after yeah. I read it. I think she knows for sure he's lying. And I think this is all a, like a trick on him. Oh. To get him to come And clean. she's a keeper. She's gonna break up with him after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, if she's gonna go that far, I love that. No, I that's think, an that's I think she's I think she's scheme. known for a while. I think she's just like, I think as soon as he said that, she was like, really? That's awesome. And I think she's just been having fun with this ever oh, since. Oh, queen. Yeah, that's oh, absolutely. Oh, you're that's so right. I didn't even think that. She's gotta be doing that. Cause again, like it's like we said, it's like it's because comedic also, the way that this is escalating. Also, I don't think he's a deadhead as much as he's saying she, she is. So mate, she, as a Grateful Dead fan, she probably knows a lot of this information. She's yeah, probably trying to look right. it up. If she looked up Jeff Cimenti, it's gonna like you're gonna get that result and, on Wikipedia. Right, and she just was like, wait, even if you were his piano teacher, I don't want to date you because you're 80. No, no. I wish there was an update. I know. It's only from a couple days ago, so it's recent. That? Let's Google. That. Deadhead piano okay. teacher, no, player, no. minor. No, Spencer, Spencer sent it to me. Uh, we were talking about it this weekend. He's just like, better start playing the piano. Like, we were just like <laughs> laughing at it. That is so funny. We need to find all of these men. I know. And bring them and on. And Bill Murray, we need to find him. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. make sure we oh, know. Oh, but, but you know, all right, IMDb. we won't find him. Okay. <laughs> Next story. This is a 42-year-old man. I paid my wife, who's 42, for sex. This seems like <laughs> Thanks a- Thanks for looking to her. Amen. Because you were, you were- You did? You guys are sitting there laughing, and I'm I like- I paid my wife 42 for sex. I'm like- I feel like I gotta I get out of here. I wanted to see your reaction to it. It's guys, funny, we have, guys. we're gonna get through four stories sorry, in sorry, this sorry, one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, this comes from relationship advice. Okay. I, a 42-year-old man, paid my wife, who's also 42, for sex. This seems like a terrible mistake, but I can't tell how bad yet. Okay. I've been married to my wife for 14 years. We have two daughters, eight and five. For the first few years, we had a good sex life. Then it dropped back significantly. She stopped instigating and would decline if I did. When I ask, she has several reasons she rotates through. We're too old, nobody has sex very often, or she's too big now. Nobody? She gained... People don't have sex anymore. <laughs> it's true. I never have. Nobody has sex. <laughs> she gained a lot of weight, and I know it bothers her, but I can't say which came first. She always seems to believe we've had sex in the last week or two, even if it's been six months. Since the kids were born, we have sex three or four times a year, usually twice around Christmas and once or twice in the spring and fall. <laughs> it's the same every time, the way she's decided it should be. I rub her back and neck. She gives me a couple squeezes and tugs. Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me read this. I rub her back and neck. She gives me a couple squeezes and tugs. I go down on her because it's the fastest and most reliable way for her to have a couple orgasms. Oh. Then she lays on her back impatiently while I climb on top. It's not ideal. <laughs> This Christmas, I got her a small gift she really appreciated. Afterwards, when he had Christmas sex, she went down on me briefly, which she hadn't done in years, and asked if there was anything else I wanted. I asked if she'd get on top and wear lingerie. She said it wasn't that nice a gift. I told her I'd get her, 
Oh. I told her I'd get her two more. She wanted something else instead. And we ended up naming a dollar amount. At the time, I really didn't care that it was weird or might have repercussions. A few days later, she mentioned something expensive she wanted to buy. I gave her money for it, and that led to her cheerfully giving me the first blowjob I've had in years. Oh. It's continued happening since then. Part of me is thrilled. I like that we are having sex. I like that there is variety, and I like that I get input into what we do. I've been in a really great mood all year, and so, so has she. On the other hand, it seems like this is probably offensive and insulting. It seems like I'm too close to the situation and am heavily influenced by the fact that I've had more sex this year than in the last three combined. Am I being paranoid or is this going to blow up in my face? You know, if I just feel like if I was sitting on the couch with anybody else or if it was any other video, I would be more logical, but I can't help but be like, <laughs> Christmas this is sex. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas sex. <laughs> He's just like, I went down on you. All right, let me climb on top. She's like, I said over, yeah. I like, <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas time. But maybe because she's like getting presents and that makes her horny. She loves me. She's, she's got a little, she's got a little material kink. She's a material. <laughs> she's a material girl. Queen. A material woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seems like I, I really like thought you guys were gonna get mad. No, job. no, no, I, I'm, I'm a little baffled by this story. She was like, da 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 da. All right, All right get over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's asking for advice now. What is he asking for? He's asking advice if this is if this is good. If this is like right. He's if got you're what he sex wants, and you're happy, I... and your wife is cheerful. Keep paying her. <laughs> Give her all the money you can if you're having a good time. As long as it's just not on Christmas all the time. Oh my God. I don't think it's just, no, he's saying throughout the year. Yeah, like, Christmas came early. It came. <laughs> no, it like, came they're, now, now, they're, this is like now their regular thing that. She's like, yeah. Oh, oh he, yeah, all the, so all the time he's like, I want sex tonight, I go shopping with you. Yeah. And then yeah. later. Pay your wife. Okay. Hell yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I genuinely think it's a this it's a, awesome. it's a material thing. She like she wants to be a, she wants to be a little sugar baby that that like turns her yeah, on. Yeah, maybe guess. that does yeah. turn her on. Which is you know if he feels happy to provide that for her, I guess it becomes yes. mutually beneficial. Okay. What what I'm thinking is like okay if they both agree on this, if they're both consenting to this situation, then fine. I think that it's like, they're not solving the issue here. No, definitely not. Some comments here. I don't necessarily disagree with what is being said, but should we also think about how OP feels in all of this? What does he actually want from the sex he gets? Is it just the act of sex? Does he like to feel attractive, to feel desired? Because this dynamic might not lead to the outcome that OP actually wishes for. Even though sometimes he might feel like beggars can't be choosers and accept what little he gets, if it doesn't actually align with what he is looking for, it might actually be counterproductive over time. OP responded, in a perfect world, sure, I'd like to feel attractive and desired and, con and a connection and all that. But honestly, I'm not that deep and sometimes a blowjob is really, really awesome. I'm dead. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you, bring, you bring in logic all right. that kind of grounds us and then it's like, Hi. of course, there's there's. He's like, actually, no, involved. I don't want a connection. I want a beat. <laughs> He's like, yeah. He's, this is whole like lengthy <laughs> paragraph of like, yeah, one day maybe I can be attracted, but you know, I really like when my d suck. <laughs> Wow! Look, if I met the way this, you say it like that, if I met this couple wrong. and they were just like, "No, this is our this is our situation. We're fine," I'd be like, "All right." Oh, poor guy. Another comment: Money is sexy. Motherhood, not so much. It sounds like fantasy role playing has reignited your marital sex life. Yeah. A lot of people commenting aren't married and don't understand how being with someone a long time can sometimes lead to, shall we say, exploration. This sounds like a harmless form of a kink. Healthy marriages definitely can and do feature sexual exploration. Uh, someone said, take it as a win. Start dating her again. Make sure to compliment her often. See if this is the start of something good. I do agree with that. I that's, like that's that. That's what I mean. Like, if this is like a mutually agreed upon thing that's like, but I think they're they're falling into it without like acknowledging what it might be. Sure, sure I definitely sure, sure. think it's a new kink. I think that they're unlocking something and they're exploring. And I'm fuck, I'm happy for them. Totally. Yeah. I got. I think I think we can put like a healthy label over it too, in that like it very well just might be her like she just wants to actually be like a little spoiled. 
She's like, I, I want to feel like I'm valued, and sometimes the way that I get that is through gifts or being taken out, and that's right. how I feel loved. So then I can come yeah. home and love what, you. What I think is like, look, I'm not, I, like, I can't relate to this story, but like, I, I think. A you don't lot like of, Christmas, Shane? I hate Christmas. <laughs> um, no, but like, I think these people clearly didn't have like conversations about sexual attraction and desire and like what turns them on. I don't think they've sat and like communicated this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they just didn't have sex for years. And now it's suddenly like, they probably could have gotten to this a lot sooner. Oh, by yeah. By being like, what, do you, what, what would we like to explore? Because, you yeah. know, I think a lot of married couples just kind of give up. Like, it's clear they did not talk about what their desires are. No. Like, ah, I just want a, B, a BJ. It's interesting <laughs> because, like he said, it's over time, right? So it's like maybe in the beginning, they yeah. were getting a little bit of that, like, early relationship, dating, sure. paying, separate kind of thing. But then eventually when you're married, your finances, they group yeah. together. Your bank accounts group together. Yeah. Uh, and she started to be like, oh, well, I'm actually not really, I'm not feeling like paid for in any ooh. way. And that's the way that I like it. And maybe maybe when they first started dating, he like really took her out. He bought her things. So maybe she's, because motherhood is, it does chemically and physically change you mm. as a person. I, so I've heard. And I feel like she wanted to have a spark without realizing it. Yeah. Human beings are just fucking figuring it out. And we right. just want but BJs. The way the the way this guy wrote this story. Oh, makes it's me insane. Die. He's so nonchalant. He He's gives like, me some squeezes and tugs and then I climb oh, on top. I wanted more. Where is she tugging? He needs to and write. Where is he squeezing? He needs to write erotic fiction like he needs for to... oh cowboys? i don't know if i would cowboy i don't know if i'd describe that as erotic squeezes and toes <laughs> i climb on top it was actually the driest description of sex quite literally that i've ever heard. cheerfully giving me a sweet old blow job <laughs> okay <laughs> okay Shane's hit his limit no <laughs> he doesn't like christmas no i'm sorry we gotta move on okay well let's move on, let's move on. all right it's time for our final story now and this one comes from Am I the Asshole, and also Best of Redditor Updates. Uh, so oh, we've got a story that has multiple up, parts. The updates. And, and this is also recent, so this is fresh. Like, like how fresh? Uh, like only like 10 days ago. All right. This is a 23 year old woman writing this. Am I the asshole for controlling what my boyfriend, who's 24, eats? I would typically say yes. <laughs> well, let's, let's find let's out what he see. eats. Okay. All right. Throw away because I don't want him to find this, but I'm honestly at my wits end here. I, uh, a 23 year old woman, have been dating my boyfriend, Jake, who's 24, for four years. I'd say we're a happy couple overall, but lately this argument has come up that's divided us. He's always had unique tastes. Cereal with orange juice instead of milk, mayo and butter sandwiches, and raw onions have been the worst culprits. I've put up with these, we all have our quirks, right? Well, two weeks ago, he started eating garlic as his midnight snack. Raw cloves of garlic. I can't share a drink with him without it reeking of garlic somehow. And kissing him, it's like shoving a clove straight in your mouth. He swears he is only eating them because he didn't want them to go to waste and that he would stop once he finished the head of garlic. But just when I finally thought it was over, I caught him sneaking a second one in the kitchen last night when he thought I was asleep. <laughs> I confronted him about his secret grocery trip this morning and he got really defensive and denied it. I'm trying not to be a nag here, but it's really wearing on me. The garlicky aura surrounding him makes me want to avoid him at all costs. But like, I don't wanna do that because he's my boyfriend. Am I the asshole for giving him an ultimatum of no more eating garlic? Edit for context. His diet seems healthy overall and he goes to the gym a lot. He had a doctor's appointment not long ago and I don't think anything came up, but I can ask him to go again. Sorry if the title is confusing. I just feel bad because I did give him an ultimatum this morning, which I know isn't good. I really love him and don't want to break up with him, but I just don't know what to do. He hasn't come back since this morning. I can't believe she's dating uh, Dustin Hoffman from <laughs> Hook. Ah! <laughs> I, you told me that. Yeah, he would do eat, you, he would do eat. You, do I you know who? Do you know who Dustin, Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman is? is? Do you know the movie Hook? Do you know what Peter Pan is? Do you know what books are? And, and this isn't to make jokes <laughs> at. Books. Okay. okay. Dustin Hoffman in Hook apparently would eat garlic to make the kids like repulsed by him. And I love that right, when you told me that fact. That might be real, that might be fake. I don't know. I was gonna say he's like a vampire hunter. or. Oh, you know? I was like, whoa, but yeah, he's Van Helsing. Yeah. That's... He, he works out and eats garlic. 
Vampire hunt. Here's the thing. Okay, her boyfriend could be a vampire, but also like let him go through this weird phase. You think it's a phase? I don't know if it's a phase. She says he sure? he, he he has always had you know, the garlic taste. specifically. The garlic. The garlic specifically. But. He'll get over I, it. I think it's I think it is something that she doesn't know yet because he is making the excuse of like he doesn't want it to go to waste, but then he's sneaking around. <gasps> Maybe he wants to break up. <sighs> You think? He's like trying he's to like this is her. my this is my way to repulse If her. he's doing secret shopping, um, <laughs> the verdict was not the asshole. Wouldn't smell good. Uh, some comments here. If you really can't stand it, convey, convey that. Op responded. I tried to explain when I talked to him this morning. I told him that the other weird food combos don't really bother me, but the particular smell of this is too much. Yeah. He said that I just need more time to get used to it, but it's been nearly two weeks already. Oh. Oh. I, Someone yeah. else said, is there anything else weird going on? OP responded, we haven't been going on our usual dates for the past two-ish months, and he's had to leave to take calls a bit. But that's just that's just because he's been swamped at work. <gasps> Nothing weird. His busy season is almost over, which is good. <gasps> he's cheating. What he's the cheating. hell is going he's on? He's cheating. He's cheating. You think he's cheating? Yeah, he's going down on someone, yeah. whatever, and he's coming home and he's putting garlic in there. Boom. Remember that music video? Let me smell your Wait, you you're right. Video? Wait, what did you I, say? I was gonna say, I, <laughs> what I have heard of is, the only thing I've heard of like that is alcoholics constantly like doing stuff to cover their right, alcoholic right, breath. Right. Never heard of someone being like, I gotta cover the smell of sex. Yeah, me mouth. neither, like never. Um, I've never. So you're Marcus saying what I'm talking about. you're saying he's over here like ha huh, and then like <laughs> garlic, and then and then he like I gotta, again. I gotta cover that up. And he did I, it again. I really love that you're gonna are you crying? Yeah, he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I really like your theory. I didn't I, I didn't even think about him coming back, putting the garlic in the mouth, and then like using that as a tactic. I was still under the impression that he is doing that to just break up with her. I didn't even include Interesting, cheating in there. Interesting, but you think he's, cause he's been all doing all these sorts of crazy things. It's like, what is he trying, is he- He's been working hide? late and he hasn't been going on dates. But she's saying this is his usual busy season. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we necessarily have to be like he's cheating. True, he he true, very true. much might be, but it also could be the flip side and that he's just too nice of a guy that he cannot break up with this woman and he is going to such extreme lengths yeah. so that she would break up with him. Um, but it's just coming off as peculiar. Yeah. Well, there's an update. <gasps> Finally. Yes. As we expected. Thank you all for your advice yesterday. It gave me a lot to think about. As it turns out, some of your comments ended up being spot on. Yesterday evening, I tried texting him about seeing a doctor like you guys suggested. He never replied. I guess he still has me muted. I spent the night tossing and turning. I kept going over uh, what I was going to say to him when he got home. Not that it mattered because he didn't come back last night. That worried me, so this morning I checked his location. He stopped sharing it with me through his phone, but I guess he forgot uh, I can still see it on Snapchat. It showed him about 30 minutes away at some house off a random back road. I was pretty confused and honestly panicked. All his friends that I know of live in the city. I tried to call him again and was sent to voicemail. So I drove over there to see what was up. When I got to the house, I noticed a woman about my age gardening in the front yard. I was pretty upset already, so I flat out asked her if she had seen my partner. She seemed surprised and asked if I meant Jake. She invited me inside and there he was. Apparently she's into gardening and they met at her stand last fall when he went to stock up on onions at our local farmer's market. They hit it off and have been seeing each other for the past six months and made it official back when his busy season started. She said lately she's been giving Jake the garlic she grew last summer since it's going to go bad soon. That's why he was so insistent on eating it by himself instead of cooking it into a shared dish like normal and why he's been eating onions like an apple instead of letting me use them on my sandwiches. He didn't want to give me her presents because in his own words, she grew it with love for me. And if you ate them, you would have known. At that point, I saw red, so I just left. Since then, Jake's been blowing up my phone about how he can fix this and that he won't do it again, but I'm so over it at this point. Just when I thought my life couldn't get any worse while I was moving his stuff to the curb, I found his stash of garlic. Shoved in the back of his closet was one 
pound of garlic in a Home Depot bucket along with letters she had written him. I'm keeping the garlic. I don't think we can ever <laughs> come back from this cheating, but I'm going to at least get some good meals out of this terrible situation. Please send me your favorite recipes to use the garlic in. I need a distraction to keep my mind off of everything. I, I, th I knew I it. I fucking fought for that man. I knew wow. it. Nah. I can't believe he was dating my character in Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I'm sorry, it's kind of romantic that he was like, she cooks this for me. Yeah, it's devastating. It's, it's like, I, damn. I mean, that is eat. really messed up the, what he did. Oh my God, and He's the fact a, that he thought he could coward. come back from it. Absolute yeah, I can coward. fix this, uh, no. how? And now she's cooking. She's a chef, I'm all for it. I love that she didn't even say like, any kind words would be appreciated or like any further advice. Nope. She goes, give me your recipes because I have a f ton of garlic now. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah, it. A I love pound it. of garlic. What's your favorite recipe that, that involves garlic? Okay, you guys are gonna hate me. Okay, what? I actually don't Eat. like garlic. Get out. I live for garlic. My favorite oh, yeah. thing as a kid, my papa used to t cut off the top of garlic, salt and pepper, olive oil, bake it in the oven, yeah. and I used to take it out and put it on bread. Yep. I ate it so much that he told me if I kept eating so much that I would grow a mustache. And I did. <laughs> and I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even making Honey, any I, of that Honey, I don't up. think that was the garlic. <laughs> I'm not making any, no, no, it was the garlic why I grew a mustache and a unibrow. It wasn't me. Was it because I'm Portuguese? <laughs> I tell you that. Trust me. It's definitely not that. No, but I I truly am obsessed with I Oh, I love onions that. and garlic are a staple. Yeah. Absolute staple. You can add them to any dish and it makes it better. It's so, so, so good. Yeah. Man. Roasted garlic. Oh, just like uh marinated garlic. Like <gasps> garlic and like olive yes. oil. Like it's been marinated. Oh man. Also I fresh. Know. Fresh garlic in rice. You make white rice and then fresh garlic in it with a little bit of olive oil. It's so y yummy. Mm. Sorry, I guess I can't. Well, no, it's well, we. I feel garlic? like we. I feel like we disagree on a lot of things too, because you also love my worst enemy, which is cardamom. I love cardamom. I just feel like I have a very sensitive palate. I'm I'm a picky eater, mm. so strong uh, strong flavors like horseradish. <gasps> you guys are gonna hate this one, truffle. I can't do it. I do love truffle. I lost the room. I lost the room. I heard that sigh, but yeah. I, I can't okay. do truffle, That's horseradish. Crazy. Again, like it just, That's it crazy. overpowers for me. See, I have, gra I, have gra I, have, I have grave mouth. I need strong flavors. Yeah, I, I just, it's, it takes over for me and it's, it's all of what I'm eating. Ooh. So then I, I just can't do it. Damn. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Wow. You're okay. Thank what, you. Thank what, you. What story here gave you the biggest what? What shocked, what, what was well, the most, I think we I, all know, I think we know uh, what it was. I think we all know. I think we know, because we spent five hours just sitting here losing our minds about it. Christmas came early. Okay, but that one. God damn, Christmas comes early. Okay, but that one wasn't oh, as, I wasn't as like gagged because of that one. Gagged? That one. Get out of here. <laughs> Take your pearl necklace and go. <laughs> okay, okay, you go. Okay. I think, I think it's still the one where she said, where he said the selfish cow. Cause I, I reacted it, oh, out it loud. Was I, was I, I actually just, it, I unconsciously just made a sound. That yeah. was horrendous. <laughs> we did that, we, I promise you, we are sober right now. Was, I don't know what's going that was, on. Yes, that was horrendous. Hamilton, but Christmas. But Christmas. <laughs> it Cheer was just like, when you were reading it for some reason, Amanda and I both were just like, <laughs> Two, two times around Christmas time. Like, why? The Hamilton one, I agree with you. Thank you. Shane, what about you, bud? Yeah, probably that Hamilton one. <laughs> yeah, 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 such a coward. All right. Guys, remember when it was about names? <laughs> remember when we started this very that serious? That was hours ago, How man. did we start this on such a serious note and then end up here? That was the same video that we were like, yeah, we should really be That was the same week. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, Thank you both for joining me here. This was a fever dream. And thank you for watching. I hope this was coherent.
Oh. Who knew that Arash and I, who knew? We cook, we, we cook. cook. Comment, comment whatever you want. <laughs> comment if Christmas is your favorite holiday. Comment, yeah. hey, Christmas is coming. Christmas is God. Coming. Uh, we, let us know what other types of themes and subreddits you want us to cover because we're, this, this theme worked. Let's re-release this on Christmas yeah. Day. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next Saturday. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.